<sighs> God damn it. Okay, before we start, let me just say this. I love Spider-Man. Spider-Man was one of the first movies I've ever seen, and since then, I've watched almost everything that has to do with Spider-Man. The good and the bad. However, through it all, I've never been as conflicted about a piece of Spider-Man media as I have been after seeing Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, do I think this movie is bad? No, it's a very solid movie. I like many of the characters, Mysterio was great, and the movie definitely has a lot of heart. The problem is that there was many moments when I was watching that made me think, that's not Spider-Man. These moments show the writer's lack of understanding about the character. They come so close to giving us that Spider-Man feel so many times, and then they never deliver. But why is this? What makes this movie a bad Spider-Man movie? Why is it not hitting the mark for many people that love this character? Well, let's quit rambling on and get into why Spider-Man Far From Home doesn't understand Spider-Man. Let's start off with what I liked about Far From Home, because there's quite a lot that I liked. The action is done very well and focuses more on Peter outsmarting his enemies rather than brute forcing his way through them. I also like how Peter ends up making his own suit. I feel like it's very important for Peter Parker as a character to be responsible for making his own suit. However, where Far From Home really shines is in the characters. For the most part, everyone plays their role well. I love the interactions between Peter and MJ. Them just talking are honestly some of the most heartfelt parts in the movie. You feel that awkward tension that comes with any high school crush, but it's never cringeworthy. I genuinely like seeing these two together. I also enjoy Happy and his friendship with Peter, how he tries to be the help that Peter needs now that Tony's gone. I feel like Happy genuinely wants to see him grow into the man Tony knew he could be. Ned kind of takes a back seat during this movie, which is fine because Peter's given many other characters to play off of, one of which being Mysterio. I love Mysterio in this movie. I think his backstory and inevitable reveal was done very well and makes him feel more fleshed out and less one note. They end up tying Mysterio's origin in with other MCU films, which ran the risk of feeling very forced, but it's done surprisingly well and makes Mysterio feel like he's been around for a while. He was very well developed, and I like the role he plays in helping develop Peter's character. At the endgame, Peter is in search of someone to fill Tony's shoes, because he doesn't believe it's him, and thinks that Mysterio may be the better choice. However, this is where the movie makes me feel conflicted. Now, there are definitely more things I like about this movie, but right now, the negatives are really overshadowing them. My main problem with Spider-Man Far From Home is that it's not a Spider-Man movie. I say this because while I do love these characters and the themes of finding your own place in the world, none of it feels like Spider-Man. The amount of sins this movie commits at the cost of Spider-Man is insane. So I'm going to quickly list off all those sins before I get into the biggest disgrace that this movie commits. Ready? Let's do this. Aunt May should be the character that is able to sit down with Peter and give him that much needed life advice. Every character gives Peter advice except for Aunt May. This just gives her the role of knowing Peter's identity. And that's it. Speaking of Peter's identity... Why does Marvel hate Peter's secret identity? Having people like Aunt May and MJ find out Peter's Spider-Man doesn't add to their relationship. It only hurts their development. I hate to make this comparison because I know the comment section is about to be a show, but I have to do it. Look at how the Sam Raimi trilogy does it. The only people that are shown to know Peter is Spider-Man are Harry and MJ. However, it took both of them two movies to get there. And within that time, we really get to see how being Spider-Man affected Peter's relationships and how each person dealt with these obstacles. We don't get that with this movie. And it makes the reveal of his identity to MJ less impactful. Also, quick spoiler right now, so skip to this time code if you haven't seen Far From Home. Piggybacking off the secret identity point, at the end of the movie, Spider-Man is swinging MJ through the city, and when they land, they notice a news report from an online media show, The Daily Bugle, hosted by the god among men, J.K. Simmons, the only true version of J. Jonah Jameson. Besides that awesome factor, during the final fight with Mysterio, he uploaded a final trick that made it look like Spider-Man was responsible for the attack in London. And that was fine, I thought it would make the next movie actually really interesting. Peter would need to learn to continue to help the city that saw him as a menace. 
However, Jameson then goes on to show Mysterio saying that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Peter's identity is revealed to the world. F*** you. This only takes away from Peter's character. He doesn't ever need to worry about being late to something, not being there for a friend, having money trouble, because everyone knows he is Spider-Man now. And we all know Marvel's not going to keep people seeing Spider-Man as a villain. This is going to be fixed in the next movie. <sighs> okay, back to the list. In Far From Home, Aunt May calls Peter's spider sense his Peter Tingle. And it's stuck throughout the movie. This may be me just nitpicking, but I can't express how much I cringed every time someone said Peter Tingle. My, my soul just died. It, it left my body, dug its own grave, and yeeted itself into said grave. It, it, it's gone. It's finished. Bottom line, it's called a spider sense. Finally, the movie feels like more a sequel to Endgame than to Spider-Man Homecoming. If you look at any character solo movies within the MCU, whether it be Thor, Captain America, or Iron Man, often they don't use the events that happen in the broader MCU as a plot point for these stories and try to grow these characters on their own merits. There are exceptions like Iron Man 3 and Tony's PTSD, but it isn't shoved down your throat and is used to further expand on Tony's character. In Far From Home, all we get is, hey, Tony's dead. Hey, remember Tony's dead? Did you know that? Yes! We get it. He's dead. Finito. Finished. I cried during his death. Twice. You don't need to remind me. This doesn't add to Peter as a character. Think about it. The lesson he learns in Homecoming is that I don't need to be like Tony Stark and can be my own kind of hero. In this movie, he learns, oh, I have to be the next Tony Stark and still be my own kind of hero. Like, what? My, my guy, you went backwards. How did you do that? What just happened? Speaking of going backwards, we are finally at the biggest sin. The mess up that makes Far From Home, dare I say, one of the worst Spider-Man movies ever. The biggest sin this movie commits is that they completely neglect the number one rule of Spider-Man. Yeah, they say, with great power comes great responsibility. This line is so important to Spider-Man as a character. And for the record, I'm not mad that he didn't say the line. I'm mad they ignored the impact of the line. We see throughout this movie and the trailers that Peter is trying to run away from his responsibilities as Spider-Man, saying things like, I want to go back on my trip with the girl who I really like and tell her how I feel. MJ, I didn't think I was going to have to save the world this summer. I had this plan with this girl that I really like and... Now it's all ruined. And then suggesting that Nick Fury gets other people to help him. Come on, there's gotta be someone else you can use. What about Thor? Off world. Okay, um, Doctor Strange. Unavailable. Captain Marvel. Don't invoke her name. I can't stress this enough when I say that Peter tries to avoid being Spider-Man for half the movie. This is the Biggest sin of the film. Spider-Man doesn't run away from danger. He doesn't try to get other people to handle his situation, even though he can. You know why? Look, when you can do the things that I can, but you don't, and then the bad things happen, they happen because of you. Yeah, I know Uncle Ben exists in the MCU, but they're acting like Peter didn't learn anything from his death. Spider-Man is inspiring because at any point, he could stop being Spider-Man and just be a normal kid with a better life for that matter. But he doesn't because he knows that he needs to use his powers to help people because if he doesn't, who will? And when Peter is brought to this dilemma in Far From Home, he constantly tries to get out of being the hero. That is not Spider-Man. You can change a lot of things about the Spider-Man mythos. Emmy's age, MJ's personality, Peter's best friend. But the moment you take away the meaning from this iconic line, you aren't just hurting this character, but you are doing a disservice to anyone 
that grew up with Spider-Man and saw Peter always put his own personal interests aside to help the city, no matter how big the problem, no matter who is attacking the city, no matter what it would mean for his relationships, he still does it because it was the right thing to do. I don't hate the MCU's take on Spider-Man. I've said it before on this channel, I love Spider-Man Homecoming, and I have openly defended it as a great Spider-Man movie. I knew it had its flaws, but so did the original Spider-Man, and I was hopeful that Far From Home would expand on Peter's character. However, the movie was just a tease. There are moments that almost feel like Spider-Man, but then I'm immediately pulled out of it from something that only harms the character. And you know what? If you love this movie, that's great. I still think it's a very solid and fun movie. I'm not here to tell you what to like or dislike. I'm not here to convince you that you are wrong. But rather to start a discussion out of our love for Spider-Man. And that is something that will never change. No matter what movie you like, actor you prefer playing the webhead, or story you thought was better told. At the end of the day, we could all come together because we all love Spider-Man. Anyway, I do hope you guys did enjoy the video. Tell me in the comments section below, what do you guys think of Far From Home? Did you guys like it or did it rub you the wrong way like me? If you guys can't tell by the way I'm dressed, I am a huge Spider-Man fan. And just, when I see the changes they make for, for his character in the MCU, like, I'm able to forgive a lot. However, just... This movie just didn't sit right with me. Now, that doesn't mean you guys don't have the right to like this movie. You guys like this movie? That's perfectly fine. It's great. Again, tell me in the comments section below. I love to start a discussion, and I'm always down there in the comments, reading, being, replying, doing the most. By the way, I do hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys like to a new channel, hit the like and subscribe button. Also, you see all the potential to some buttons. Anyway, my name is Gio, and I will talk to you all later.